uh, give the stage to <laughs> <laughs> Hannah and uh, yeah, the NMQ. Can I just check, do all three of these microphones work? OK, great. Cool. I'll just assume they're all going to work. And if they don't, you can tell me to start speaking. OK. <laughs> All right, well, um, I'm Hannah, otherwise known as Bubbles, apparently. Um, and that's Murray, and that's Daff. And we're going to be talking about the Debian new maintainer process. We're going to give a bit of an idea of the history of the process, because in talking to Debian developers over the past six months, year, we've realized that many people actually don't know how the process came about and what exactly happened. So we thought it would be a good opportunity to tell you all exactly what happened. Um, and look at this and see whether the new maintainer process is actually achieving the aims that we might have hoped it would be. So precisely what we're going to talk about is on the screen there. We're going to give a history of the new maintainer process. We're going to explain how the process works today, look at the aims, and also see how we could do better. So over to Murray. So... When Debian started off, there unsurprisingly wasn't much of a formal process. Basically, all you well, at this point, Ian uh, Murdoch still controlled access to the archive. So, if you wanted to get a file in there, then you could either sort of um, get friends with him and you get an FTP account, and then you could just um, upload things directly. But for a lot of other people, there was a what we'd call a staging area. So you could upload a file, and then Ian would look over it and then if it looked reasonably sane, it would get put into the archive. Um, so that's obviously, you can, still, you can see that has some analogies with what, well, if you know about the NM process, that will have some analogies to you about what happens today. But this is a pretty simple version. Um, so uh, this is very informal. Um, and this is just a, a quote from Bedell. Um, should we read it out? Yeah. So, yes. I've re he read uh, Ian Murdoch's Debian Manifesto, and well, I'll just read it, uh, resonated with it and dove in. Within a couple of days, he was asking Bruce Perrins how to country it. Offered up a package and emailed Ian to ask, tell him who he was and what he'd done. And he just got an email back from Ian, thanking him for the contribution and saying, welcome to the project. So quite different to the new maintainer process nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, after a while though, yeah. this stopped working. So, um, as Debian got bigger, uh, more and more people joining the project, um, it, this process was too, was too simple. We needed something which is a bit more sophisticated to um, deal with the amount of people who wanted to join in um, and contribute to the project. Um, so, they set up a new maintainer at Debian.org email address. You send an email to this address to ask for an account. Uh, this email would go to Bruce Perrins um, and he would read your request and create an account for you. Um, funny enough, uh, this stopped working after a while. Um, yeah, but one person, one person doing every, all the work, and uh, Devin got. De something to do with Bruce resigning. <laughs> yeah, and that. Um, I think I think this is actually is actually stopped working before then. This yeah. is this is. Um, well, in between, one of the many times. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, this is 1996, 97. So. Yeah. Yeah. So in April 97, Bruce delegated new maintainer approval to the security team. And applicants were supposed to say who they were and what they planned to do in Debian. And then the security team would assess their applications, decide whether they were suitable, and create an account for them. Seems fairly simple. Seems like a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> a couple of months later, yeah, that was in April. In September, fortunately, I mean, who knows what would have happened otherwise, but fortunately, Elmo and, Elmo and Joey came to the rescue. So, they, yeah, they hatched a cunning plan. Um, and decided how they could infiltrate the system and take over the new maintainer process. And as you can see, this is very complicated. You see the conversation that took place right there. 
there we go. Yeah, so here's a quote from um, Elmo about this. We, we've instituted minimal procedures, and we had to have a trespass to you. We didn't at this stage, this is comparing to the situation today, we didn't have this whole novella question and answer thing. You merely had to say what you were going to be working on, and you didn't actually have to show that you could do this really, it was just, you just had to have an interest. But on the other hand, they did, uh, they did phone and talk to every applicant, which obviously gave them some idea of, is, well, does this person exist, and is, is this, does it sound a suitable kind of person to be in Debian? Yeah, after a while, this stopped working. So, um, people complained about the speed of applicants getting processed. Um, because there was only two people doing the work, uh, it, it turned out that there was a, a big backlog of people. Um, just too much work for, for people who are, who are also active in doing other things in the project, very busy people, um, just couldn't keep up with the workload of, um, of, of doing NM. Um, so this resulted in, did you, did you miss a slide? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so there was lots of discussion, um, and after, after many emails, uh, the, the result was a process which had four steps. Um, initial contact with the applicant, uh, checking the identity of the applicant, um, checking that they are who they say they are, um, an internship period where they um, uh, get involved with the projects and uh, get through a sort of trial period. Um, and then after that, they get, they get reviewed by the NM committee and approved or rejected. Oh, maybe we did miss a slide. Yeah. No, we didn't miss a slide. That's fine. Anyway, so as a result of this, Elmo decided that he was happy to remain on the new maintainer team. team. The Details of the new new maintainer process were worked out by Dale Sheets, and as you can see, there's Elmo, loving new maintainer. <laughs> Thank you, bubbles. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and the new maintainer process is pretty much the same today. So yeah, just some of you probably have gone through this and will be all too familiar with it. But for those of you who are who are either in the process or thinking about going in, I'll just summarise the overall shape of what the process is today. So, well, first of all, we can say, who are the people involved? Obviously, as, as someone trying to get into Debian, you're, well, window, you normally get referred to as an applicant. Um, so, therefore, the person who's really, who you really deal with as an applicant is called the application manager. So this is someone who'll send you a lot of annoying messages saying, um, can you answer all these questions? Um, can you fix your package? Yeah, I found like you've got some double spaces in your Debian rules file, or um, this kind of stuff. Um, Ask you to remove a comma and then yeah. put it back in the next day. Yeah. Um, then, there's, 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 then, yeah. So you speak to the application manager. There's also this sort of mysterious, shady figures lurking in the background somewhere of the Debian account managers. And as the applicant, these these are sort of somewhere a um, bit distant from you. Um, but you, you kind of know they exist, and in fact, they're really the people you're trying to impress. Um, because you've, you've got to get past your application manager, but if the account managers aren't happy with you, then you won't get an account. And then the, there's these other people who kind of float around somewhere around the process, who are the front desk members. And they're basically responsible for sort of running the day-to-day -day stuff of new maintainer. So they do things like they assign incoming applicants to application managers. Um, and make sure that everything's ready before the information goes off to the Debian account managers to actually create accounts. And there's a couple of other changes just to fill, just sort of finish off the history that have come in over the last period to kind of complete the NM process as it is today. So one change that's quite significant um, that kind of gradually came in but is now meant to be a definite requirement is that you should have made some contributions to Debian before you apply. So you shouldn't, I mean, nowadays, if you um, apply to NM without having done anything yet, then basically you, you, the idea is you just get turned away at the gate and said, told to come back a bit later. Um, so for example, for the majority of people who are trying to become package maintainers, it's meant to be a requirement that they should have a package already in the archive that they've, um, that they've been working on. Um, also another requirement in there that's kind of related is that 
if you're, an app, if you're a new applicant to the system, you've got to find, bit, well, it shouldn't be that hard for most people, you've got to find one Debian developer who's happy to write a short paragraph about you saying, yes, this person is suitable. So again, the, bit, the idea there is basically that if you've been doing work in Debian at all, there should be at least one person who thinks you've done something worthwhile. Um, if, there's, if no one knows who you are at all, then probably you haven't done enough yet that it's any point in you trying to enter the process. So this might sound very complicated, but um, in reality, it's, it's not actually that difficult to do NM. So for those of you who haven't done it yet, um, we thought we'd write a simple guide for how to, how to go through the new maintainer process. So the first thing to do is start contributing to Debian. This, 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 is, this is fairly easy. Oh, I, I believe we have a question. I should congratulate you for staying within Enrico's range of seven plus or minus two. <laughs> <laughs> So once you've started contributing to the budget, then you find a developer to bribe. Um, this doesn't have to be very much, maybe... Yeah, money, chocolate, all works well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 nothing too ostentatious. Yeah. Um, then you just have to wait for a while. Eventually, you get an application manager assigned to you. Um, you then use your, your lead skills to impress your application manager. Um, your impressed application manager will send a report, which will then impress the, uh, the account managers. <coughs> Now you need to hug Elmo. This might, this might be a bit difficult, um, given that he's. Gonna, yeah. Well, well, yeah. just 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 in terms of. He lives in London. We've got his phone number. So if you need to know how to do it, just ask us afterwards. We we, we, we can we can demonstrate if if. if uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm so happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, once you've hugged Elmo, he'll create an account for you, um, and then, then you can profit. Uh, pre pretty, pretty simple, all in all. Yeah. I think there are some serious factual flaws with this slide. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, a brief bit about the new maintainer templates, which were produced by Jörg a while back. And these are a set of template questions for applicants. They're designed to be used by application managers to kind of guide the entire process. And they cover things like philosophy and procedures, so you'll be asked to answer questions about the DFSG, and tasks and skills, so you'll be asked to do stuff with the bug tracking system, that kind of thing. And Many application managers follow these pretty much to the letter. Some people use them as a basic guideline, which is, I believe, how they were intended, and some application managers don't follow them at all. So I believe after producing those template questions, Jörg was appointed as a new DAM, and he checks over the applications. You can see a very nice picture of some application checking there, and Elmo creates the accounts. Yeah, so you could say, well, has the NM process as it is today worked? And overall, you could certainly say, well, well, we'll talk about some criticisms in a moment, but overall, you can say it has worked because before the NM process as it is came in, um, it was, you, well, there was this way to get into Debian in principle, but it had it was it become impossible that um, you could apply and nothing would happen. Whereas since the NM process has been um, in its current form, there have been, well, our, our latest figure was 715 people have come through this process in five years, which is, well, it's about 45% of the applicants who have ever been, of the people who have ever been Debian developers, and, uh, well, it would be a bigger fraction of the people who, have st who are still Debian developers at the moment. Yeah, it's about 75% of the current number of active Debian developers. Right, so... Um, this is obviously a great thing. Uh, we got, we got new people in Debian, um, but I think we feel that it's worth looking at whether we can improve the process and, and do better. Now, the most frequent criticism um, is that new maintainers, it's a long process. Um, this often puts people off, um, that they, they hear it's, it's, a, it's a long and arduous process, and uh, I, I, think, I think this is quite discouraging um, to people who are considering applying. Um, People tend to get stuck when they're halfway through the process. Um, uh, they lose contact with the application manager for some reason or another. It's not, it's not clear what happens, but 
they they get stuck, they they get they get put on hold, they eventually get rejected. Um, I think uh, I think there's a problem in there that people don't often understand what what the application manager is expecting for them. They they know that they have to um, that they have to uh, communicate with the application manager, but they're not sure exactly what they have to demonstrate. Um, one of, the, one, of the, one of the main problems is um, the wait for application manager assignment. And this is largely because of the limited number of application managers. We have 904 roughly active Debian developers in Debian today. Um, but of those, only 34 are active application managers, which is 3.8%. And it actually turns out that there have been many, many, many application managers um, over the years. But for, for one reason or another, people have stopped being application managers. So um, be interesting to see how many people here have been an application manager. Okay. And how many people are currently an application manager, as in they have an applicant at the moment? Yeah. Oh, actually have an applicant. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> All hands drop. I, I yeah. think that's pretty representative of Debian as a whole. Yeah. Um, so lack of, lack of application managers is a, is a problem. I think we're going to take questions for the most part at the end okay, and just no, small comments and stuff good. now. Yeah. So what should we be aiming for? Um, clearly the, the overall aim of the process is to uh, have new people in Debian who are suitable, suitable people. Um, as long as we're doing that, then, then we're basically doing okay. Um, but. And the, and the key things for being suitable for being a Debian developer are having an appropriate outlook, um, having a, a, a philosophy in, in favor of free software, and having skills that, so that uh, they, can, they can do useful things in Debian, be it packages or translations or, or whatever. Um, and it's interesting to consider... Yeah, hold on. Okay, thank you. So it's interesting to look at the, at the, the relationship between the application manager um, and, sp and, and sponsors of, of people. So sp sponsorship is when a a, no, an official developer sponsors a package for, an, for somebody who is doing things for Debian but is not an official developer, uploading packages into the archive. Um, so it's interesting to compare um, the role of application managers who act in an official capacity to bring people into the project and sponsors who work in an informal, um, less official capacity to, to sponsor new people. Um, so the, the difference between testing people and uh, teaching people. And this, there's obviously some overlap between those two roles. So some things that I've been, well, we've all been thinking about lately. Um, one thing that I'm particularly interested in is theory versus practice. So because so many of the currently active application managers use the template questions, this got me thinking about the extent to which the new maintainer process was actually contributing to the Debian distribution. So if you ask people a bunch of theoretical questions and get them to write academic answers on them, that's fine. They're very much demonstrating that they have an abstract knowledge of these con concepts, but answering questions doesn't directly benefit the project. Obviously, it does mean that you, know, you can test whether people are appropriate for being Debian developers, but the actual, the actual product of the new maintainer process is then just a set of answers. Many application managers won't let these answers be put online. I know my application manager isn't too keen for that. Um, this is because it makes the job of other application managers harder when they have to check whether somebody's just copied the answers to questions. But this means that the entire process, certainly as I'm going through it at the moment, has been, at least so far, a lot of answering th theoretical questions and then sticking a text file in my home directory and that's it. And that, I really feel, doesn't contribute towards the distribution, towards the project as a whole. So I'm really interested in whether we could go about actually testing skills in a much more active way. So for instance, rather than asking questions about the bug tracking system, let's fix some bugs. Rather than asking questions about documentation, translation, internationalization, 
QA, just anything where we could be doing tasks. It's better to be doing the tasks and actually seeing whether people can do them than just seeing whether they abstractly know how they might go about doing the tasks. And I should say that although I have been answering many theoretical questions for my AM, we are actually doing some more practical stuff for the later stages of the process. And another thing that I've also been thinking about is collaboration and communication. Um, Debian's a large community. We've got 900 and something Debian developers. That's a lot of people, and a lot of people who are intelligent and want to have their say on things. A lot of people who post to mailing lists and who feel really strongly about the project, which isn't that surprising. Most tasks in Debian will require collaboration. Um, this might be in the form of working with other developers, or it might be in terms of dealing with users, fixing bugs, asking users about the bugs that they're finding, that kind of thing. So one thing I've been wondering about is whether we should actually be making a more concerted effort to see how people respond in terms of communication and collaboration skills. It's great if you can package stuff. That's obviously very important. But if you can't hold a coherent conversation with your users, or if you can't collaborate productively with other developers, how much are you contributing to the project? And it's not clear how we could test for these skills or even whether this is the right thing to do. We could look at mailing list threads, just as we're asked to look at licenses and say whether a license complies with the DFSG, point out ways in which it doesn't. We could ask applicants to look at a mailing list thread and say how they would respond to certain posts. There are many ways we could look at this kind of thing. So I think that's something that we should at least think about. Yeah, so just before we move on to um, some more general discussion, which I, as I suspect some of you have, have, have things to say, I just ask how we should actually think about the NM process. I mean, the conventional way to think about it is people normally see it as just this big test that you have to get through. And really, it's, it's seen as a barrier to getting into Debian that people think, well, I want to do stuff for Debian, but I, well, I'm, if I want to get a real membership of Debian, I'm going to have to go through this silly process and I'll answer these questions and wait a long time. So it's seen as some kind of preventative measure. Maybe, maybe people think that's a good thing in some cases because it, it's keeping out bad, inappropriate people. But it's still generally seen in a pretty negative light. But I, mean, you, I think it's, it's worth remembering that we can see the NM process in a much more positive way. That you can say, well, Debian is this community. And just as, if, well, just as in the real world, if you move to a country, you don't immediately get citizenship. You have to um, show that you want to actually become part of that community. And it's the same for Debian. Um, and it's, it's not just then a question of trying to exclude people, but it's a question of how can we actually bring people in and make sure that they do become full members of Debian. And in many ways, you could then say, actually, well, having this formal process makes us a lot more open than many other projects. There are a lot of free software projects where there's this pretty, a very small group of people who are the core members of a project. And it can be very hard to actually become a member of a sort of full member of the project like that if you weren't in there at the start. Often, those people really want to keep a very tight control over it and um, not hand, on, ha hand anything on. Whereas for Debian, by the time you go, as you go through this process, you're being brought in, and by, uh, by the end of it, you're a full member just as if you, well, with the same rights as if you had been in Debian from the start, including, for example, that you, the, obviously the voting rights as well as upload rights. Um, so we can, we can positively see the NM process, not just as some kind of big negative test, but as something that should actually be bringing in people, and meaning that by the, by the time you've gone through this process and become a member of Debian, you should have a feeling, well, we should have people who have a feeling of responsibility and commitment, not just to their own package that they want to get in, um, their new IRC client or whatever, um, but they should actually have a, have, feel this towards the whole project, that they want Debian as a whole to do well. And also, of course, to the more general free software community. Right. So that's basically it. At this point, we'll be happy to take questions and kind of open things up to more discussion. We have just under 15 minutes left, and we do have to get out of here pretty promptly at the end. So keep your questions short. We will cut you off if you go on for too long. Um, yeah. Martin? We've got a microphone there. See, I have the microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to make a quick observation on uh, what Hannah was saying about collaboration. Uh, during uh, Andreas's uh, small groups in Debian talk, uh, I even suggested maybe making as part of the new maintainer process, serving a kind of apprenticeship in one of the teams that we have in Debian, 
uh, already because that way you know we can see how well people are working with others and that kind of thing. So next question. It's quite a challenge to keep that one short, but I'll do my very best. Um, so we have about 900 developers and. In my last statistics, that was about 180 actually active, which makes about 700 developers that are more or less active or are completely inactive, and all of those have a GPG key, which enables them to write to the archive. I think this is a huge security problem. Now, I appreciate the work that you've done. You've done a great presentation of the NM process, and I think that also the, all the people who have worked on improving the NM process in the past couple of months have done a great job, but I want to raise the question whether it is actually what we want. Do we want to streamline this process to get more and more people into Debian? And maybe this is what we want. If that is what we want, do we also want to make sure that we can get people out of Debian again? Because I don't think that we are going to be able to scale just in terms of number of developers. We see it now, we are not scaling well, and it's just not going to get better. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great point. Um, I think we definitely do need a procedure for getting rid of developers. Well, we, we do to some okay. extent already. I mean, there are, the, off, you know? there are the missing, I mean, there's, yeah, there, yeah. Are, there are people working, of course, on yeah. the missing in action checks, yeah. trying to pick up when people stop working on their packages, and e well, and then either sort of politely or less politely if, um, to uh, sort of encourage them to give up those packages and lose upload rights, basically, if they're not going to do anything else. I mean, so, I mean, there is some procedure there already. I mean, obviously, yeah, at the, it's, but yes, it's I unclear exactly that. how we're going. Also, I mean, another, well, a related question is when you have people who are, if, well, if you've got someone who's uploading a very rarely changing package, then it, it's an open question of should that person have full upload rights? I mean, I think it's, it's dangerous to say they don't need them, therefore they shouldn't have them, because as I, as I was saying at the end, I think it is good if we can have people who genuinely feel that they are a full part of Debian. And it's dangerous to start saying that you don't, you, sort of this package you're doing doesn't really count, we won't let you in. And I think something related to this is also the fact that you don't have to be a package maintainer to apply to be a Debian developer. You could be somebody working on translation or documentation writing. Yet everybody who passes through that new maintainer process gets upload access. So this kind of, I feel we're in this kind of conflict situation at the moment where on the one hand, everybody should know how to deal with packages because they're all going to have upload rights. But by the same token, that means that people who don't actually want to maintain packages are being forced to go through and develop knowledge that isn't necessarily appropriate to them. So perhaps we need to look at how developers do or which developers do different tasks and maybe look at restricting upload access depending on whether people are actually package maintainers and whether people are actually writing documentation and doing other tasks. Sure. Well, I, I will follow up on that just quickly. Um, it's not just upload. <clears throat> it's not just upload access. No, it's actually course. shell access. Yes. And that can be very important, particularly if you're doing website stuff. But to follow up on your question about security, surely you're more concerned that there's people who are who are going through the NM process who won't get in, who've been explicitly rejected, but have packages in Debian anyway. I mean, any per person, every yeah. to me, every every package in Debian should be there by a Debian maintainer. And the process should be short enough that, realistically, um, the f maybe the first upload isn't, but every subsequent one should be. I, I just ha have a mic here. Um, I just want to come back to my question from, from uh, I had to do the release team, because we had on the one slide there was a uh, 7 plus 1 item uh, list and there was uh, a single person named on it. And so if what, uh, somebody wants to go to Hug Elmo in a restaurant and they both two get so, uh, some food with salmonella and they go to the uh, hospital for four weeks, what will be with our main new maintainer process? Maybe we find some other person who is nice to hug, perhaps a nice woman <laughs> to, to get some more people in. So really what you're saying is we need to clone Elmo? Uh, no. <laughs> Just just find, <laughs> find some who helps I know. <laughs> okay, um, at one point in time during the last year, I did actually raise the point of um, separating more the, the actual features you get with Debian developership, and I see them as being um, the ability to vote your Debian.org email address, shell access, and upload rights. 
and upload rights should only be there for those people that have um, um, packages to maintain. I know so many translators, contributors, bug fixers, user support people, PR people that don't even bother to go through the NM process because they don't need to. And I think we should learn from that. Now, a quick follow-up on the security question. I think um, in order for a non-maintainer to get a package into Debian, they have to go through a sponsor. And I know a couple of sponsors that will just simply take the package, recompile, and upload it and not look at it. And I've seen it a lot of times before. I think it's OK to do that when you've worked with a guy for, or a girl sorry, um, for a couple of months for a couple of packages. And you know that that person is generally reliable. You have no reason to believe otherwise. Um, but it's definitely not OK for new um, mentees. And I think we definitely need to do something here, too. We need to probably institutionalize the sponsoring in some ways. Thank you. Well, again, the this, this, this sponsorship system works a lot better when it is, some, as you suggest, someone who you actually work with a particular sponsor and try and learn from them. But that's not actually enforced in the current system. It is perfectly possible just to go onto IRC and say, I've got this cool new IRC client who wants to sponsor it, and wait for someone to come along who will say yes. Um, and there's, there's nothing to enforce that the next time when you have another upload which sort of adds a root access hole or something, um, that it's actually even the same person who looks at it. So. I have a comment to make. The current process does have a requirement to fix some RC bugs. And the packages check as is at the end. Maybe it should be a bit sooner so the AM can be get impression of your packaging skills. And not only after you answered all the 80 questions. Yeah, although, I mean, another thing worth noting is that if the AM is doing their, at least, well, if the AM is doing their job, basically, they should also be looking at what you're doing in Debian outside their direct communications with you. So they should be set looking at, I mean, looking at what you've done on mailing lists, what other bugs and packages are working, and not just um, the packages that you've sort of explicitly um, maintaining yourself. So. I think often people in the app, well, pe applicants often don't notice um, how much the application manager is doing. They well, it's the, only, it's the only really, of course, to know if the application manager asks them directly about it. Um, a couple of notes. Um, one about the length of the AM process, because often we complain about the length of it. But uh, I've been following some applicants, which are not my applicants. And um, more than complaining about the length of the process, they were complaining about having to do s things they totally wouldn't care about. And, um, yeah. and I mean, and they have things to do, other things to do in the project. They would like maybe to maintain another package, but they are hold back in like, Studying maybe a sub policy that they don't care about, or uh, writing a man page for a software they don't use, and so having to figure out also how this software works. Um, so th that's one like focusing more on people needs. For example, when I've been an AM, I've been looking at the packages people would maintain and ask questions about that specific area because I remember that I've never been asked question <coughs> about like the Python policy, but then, well, no, that, that's the wrong example. Um, <laughs> because I have a bug saying, I don't want to look into the Python policy, I want a co-maintainer, so the, not the Python <laughs> policy, but I've never read the per policy, but then when I had to maintain a per package, well, I picked up the per policy and I did it. So, I, so that, that was one. To can, I, can I comment on that? Yeah. Um, I think that's a really good point. And I think it's important to, to make sure that we do check all of the skills and areas of knowledge that any given person working within Debian will actually touch upon during their time as a Debian developer. But the way we're doing it that at the moment is to have this kind of one-size-fits-all procedure and test everybody on everything. And that's perhaps not such a good idea, as you're saying. But then we get into the situation of how we structure the procedure if we don't do that kind of thing, because then you're putting a lot of, well, you're basically asking application managers to put a lot of effort into working out what's appropriate for each person. And I think that might reduce the number of people who are willing to be application managers, but I think it might be worth doing. So I guess the question would be how best to do that. Well, okay, that, that was one. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is, at this point, um, 
about having different levels of upload access. Like I've been um, an applicant who was maintaining like localization packages. I had an applicant who was maintaining Python packages, and that was like, and they knew such a huge deal about localization and Python policies and everything. So I was really happy about letting them go. But then I have no idea if one day they will maintain a shared library, mm. exactly. uh, what is going to happen. And yep. I'm not going to, I was not wanting to bug them about shared libraries at that point. But then why not like, that would be a huge infrastructural change. So I guess people will tell me like, fuck off. But like, if you want to upload a, a, a shared library, then maybe there's a little bit of, uh, of an M to go through just to make sure that you know what's involved. Because what's happening now is that people yeah. like don't know about shared libraries. They happen to have to maintain one, and they have no idea there's a library packaging guide. They have no idea of the things involved, and you get all sort of havoc. Okay. Um, I also have a few comments uh, on the things that were said earlier. Um, I do know that the account managers check more than just what's their direct communi communication with the applicant. And so if they do look at what you've done in mailing list and so on, they also already have a view of social skills and whatever. So that is being tested implicitly in, in, in some, on some level. Maybe well, it should be more uh, obvious in the evalu evaluation yeah. form that the account manager fills out. Yeah, because not all account managers do look at what's happening on mailing lists, and mm -hmm. not all account managers even feel they could possibly bring that kind of thing into their final report for the account managers. So, yeah, I, I would agree that it's yeah. perhaps not... A second point is that uh, I think it's good to allow account managers a little bit of freedom in judging people. Uh, I know my account manager did. I never went to the, through the task and skills uh, part uh, based on what I'd already done within the Debian installer team, which is a kind of internship, uh, which was fairly uh, intensive. Um, and so it, it already does work in that way that uh, in some cases, if, if there's a really good reason, uh, that it's a bit more flexible than the process yeah. that's been sketched. No, I, and I think that's a great thing. I, do I just worry yeah. that we're heading in the direction of just very standardized testing, and I'm not a big fan of standardized testing. No. <laughs> uh, a, a very last remark. Um, I agree that it's not really useful. I don't think it's very useful to assign uh, people tasks like fix an RC bug because uh, that you need to have an RC bug that is suitable to that person and sure. it will often take a lot more effort to find an RC yeah. bug that is suitable to their skills than uh, doing more general tasks yeah. and, and having standardized testing. Yeah. Uh, that's the downside of, of what you were proposing. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, firstly, I agree with everything you're saying about the new maintainer process. Um, I think you're, you're exactly right. And I think that the people who are worried about the, um, the question of allowing people upload access when they might not need it or shell access when they might not need it is, uh, is very, that's a really important question. But I think there's, a, there's another um, effect of the fact that most people going through the new maintainer process are going to be maintaining packages, which we're overlooking, which is that um, one of the consequences of being a developer is that you get to vote in Debian elections. And at the moment, we are effectively um, denying people who might be doing masses amount, you know, large amounts of work for Debian, who might be heavily involved in other kinds of work for Debian's Debian. Debian's lawyer can't vote. Uh, make we're we're vote. not allowing them to have any say in, in the direction Debian heads in. And I think this is terribly one-sided. And I think it's, um, it's, it's really doing these people and Debian an injustice. I think it's a problem we should fix. I, th I think it's, it's, that's, that's because the ENM process has, uh, at the moment, it has um, technical permissions for um, doing uploads intermixed with um, the more social aspect of voting. These things are tightly bound together. Um, so perhaps if we can separate out um, your ability to upload versus your ability to vote, that, that would perhaps address that problem. Okay, uh, well, I'm afraid uh, you're out of time, but once again, I invite uh, uh, everyone uh, who uh, still have questions to ask uh, to continue discussing the, uh, the topic, but just outside.
Uh, and we have also have an announcement, I think. Uh, Alexander, yeah, just a small announcement for those who volunteered to help doing the formal uh, diners this evening. Um, we will meet at 5 uh, p.m. at the cantina. Who volunteered, please be there. So, thanks. Thank you, presenters, for a very <laughs>